The body of work here is really a result of uh, a number of visits that I have done to, uh, that are made to Puerto Rico. And uh, the, um, the impact that the environment had on me uh, is obviously reflected in what you see, you know, the vegetation, the, uh, the, the, the color. Uh, although even uh, coming from Mexico and having been raised in Mexico, uh, color is also very prominent in, in our culture. Um, New England is um, pretty gray uh, many months of the year. So the, the, the contrast that, that uh, impacted me and on my visits is, is really uh, what motivated this, this latest body of work. Although my, um, my career spans uh, a number of, uh, of uh, approaches, uh, starting from the uh, academic, which I was um, trained in, at the Academia de San Carlos in Mexico City and uh, you know for realist kind of painting and then went to uh, uh, figurative and what have you uh, but for many years I have done a lot of work that uh, um, have to do with the human condition uh, homelessness uh, uh, oppression uh, war um, HIV AIDS uh, you name it uh, uh, all kinds of subjects that, that have a, uh, a great impact on, 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 on people. Um, this is more of a lyrical um, approach that I've taken lately. Uh, there are a lot of beautiful things that um, surround us and, uh, and that we need to appreciate and we need to learn to appreciate. I think that there are too many um, preoccupations with negative uh, things happening everywhere but uh, not enough emphasis is placed on on the good things that happen to uh, to us around us so uh, my motivation right now is being um, aware of my surroundings and appreciating people mostly and not so much things but appreciating what makes us uh, better human beings People always ask me if I have uh, a favorite artists uh, that uh, have an impact on my work. Um, I imagine that subconsciously we're all um, affected by, um, by works that excite us. Uh, coming from the uh, mural tradition of, of uh, Mexican uh, masters like Diego Rivera and Orozco and Siqueiros, uh, and having been trained in, in mural painting, um, those have been my influences in some way um, because uh, their work has had a lot to do with the human condition, particularly where um, uh, in, in the uh, freedom movements and uh, independence and revolution and what have you. Uh, so to a great extent, I think I have been impacted by, by those masters, but. Um, looking at it in a, in a lar larger perspective, I think that uh, uh, if I like an artist, you know, whether I study the artist or not, the work has had an impact on me subconsciously. So somehow or another, you know, it, it, it is reflected in, in some of the work that I have done over the years. Um, I've been asked, you know, what is your style of painting? Um, I never really pigeonhole myself into a style. Having been trained in the ac ac academia, I like to draw um, and I like to paint, but I think sometimes I have to take just a, a totally free approach uh, and explore other sides of, of, of my creative side that I haven't before. In this case, particularly, um, I use vegetation as my medium and, and let the shapes of the leaves and the vegetation and the colors and the colors that I come up with define what my style is. Um, to me, it's irrelevant. Um, ultimately, if the piece speaks to the viewer in some way, um, they decide what that style is. I don't. Um, whether it's the color, the composition, um, or the subject matter, um, they all combine to, to have an impact or not. You know, there are, there, 
my pieces are all not to, meant to be masterpieces. I mean, I am not one to decide that I have created a masterpiece. History will decide and whether uh, this is just a, uh, um, an ephemeral uh, body of work that is going to have no consequence in the future, so be it. Um, I think that the most important part of the creative process is just to create and, uh, and be in, in touch with, with what you want to do at, that, at the particular moment. And this is what this is, so if that's the style, so, so that's the style. Uh, there are a number of pieces that I have created over the years that um, really I feel more uh, closer to, uh, particularly because of what the subject matter is. I am very fond of this latest body of work uh, because of my latest experience with visiting the, the island of Puerto Rico and the um, friendships that I have made there and, uh, and understanding and appreciating their culture. And these are very special to me. I've done, this is my third series there. But uh, there are some pieces, for example, there's one piece um, that I created in 2009, and that is a mural. It's called Sugar Beet Workers, and that is the history of my family. Um, I have a fondness to it because it really um, gives a focus to where I came from. Um, I'm a, a, a descendant of farm workers, migrant farm workers from Mexico. And uh, the history of farm workers in this country is, is a very rich one, uh, very tragic in many ways. But it is one that uh, has, in, 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 in many ways, uh, sustained this country um, just by, it, by the nature of the labor that is involved. And uh, I have. Uh, a high sense of pride of, of, of being a descendant of, of migrant workers uh, because, because of their labor and their, and their, uh, and their effort, uh, I am here. And I have uh, what I call succeeded in, in, in my life. Uh, success is defined by each individual and mine is defined by having a good life, uh, surrounded by good people and having a good family and having been able to instill good core values into my children and, uh, and that's why um, that piece is, is particularly close to me but I have others that, uh, um, that also call me for, for, uh, for appreciation uh, the series that I did in 1989 on oppression, uh, utilizing the barbed wire as my symbol to um, speak on uh, the um, um, on the abuse that I was aware of uh, on people, on women, on children, on on men, and what have you, and uh, and it still continues. So it's really an unending battle. Uh, but there are times when you just have to kind of step aside and, uh, and do other things so that, so that you, you don't get worn down with the same subject over and over. Um, and I'm sure there will be other pieces in the future that, uh, that will be favorite of mine as well, and I hope that I will continue. Um, my work has... Uh, number of purposes and um, one is to to um, offer the viewer something that they can take away uh, my my socially conscious uh, work has had a more specific focus in that in that respect and that is that um, those types of works have been designed to invite the viewer to reflect on their own uh, life and their own uh, activities and motivate them to take action <coughs> to improve their own, their own livelihoods and to improve the lives of those around them. So they are really a call for action. Um, this latest body of work is more uh, a reflective uh, uh, kind of work where uh, people will interpret the pieces their own way. 
uh, all that these are intended is uh, um, these pieces were intended to, uh, for is to to appreciate, as I said earlier, the <coughs> the environment of of, of, uh, of a rainforest in Puerto Rico and and some aspects of the culture that that I grew fond of, and um, these are feel good kind of paintings for me. Um, I want to feel good when I see a painting, and I think people do too. You know, if if somebody wants to buy one of these paintings and bring them to their home, and that will provide them a little bit of a of a, of a happy moment, so to speak. You know, well, that is the purpose. So, but again, you know, people have to decide what their purpose is. But um, uh, but mine is just to just to provide a little bit of solace and enjoyment for people, basically. How do I feel when people interpret my work differently? I'm okay with it. I mean, again, you know, it's, it's up to them to interpret it, really. Um, if, if the piece needs explanation, then it doesn't work, at, at least from my perspective. <clears throat> and um, one subject matter will be interpreted in so many ways by different people that even if you intended it to say something very specific, somebody else will, will interpret it differently. Um, some of the things I have done in the past are very, very specific in, in, in intent. Uh, there's one piece that is in the collection of the Mattatuck Museum in Waterbury, and it's called Two Ladies, and it speaks about homelessness. And it speaks very clearly about the, the issue of homelessness in this country. Uh, and uh, and it's, it correlates to liberty, it correlates to oppression, it correlates to inaccessibility, um, contradiction. And I have not found a person who has not interpreted the way that I meant it. So. Um, when I do those kinds of works, they are well uh, thought out. I'm not an intellectual painter. I'm more of a gut painter. Um, um, I, I like the, the, the sensory uh, aspect of my work, particularly color. But when it comes to subject matter, uh, my work is very pointed and very direct and sometimes abrasive and caustic because I see that it needs to be at that at the particular time. So um, when people interpret differently, it's okay, you know. I think it's an education process. Uh, we all need educating uh, in some things always. So if people misinterpret, and that uh, opens an opportunity for dialogue which uh, uh, enriches uh, both myself and, and the person um, questioning my work. Oh, advice for aspiring artists. Um, I don't really. Um, I think that as an artist, like in every other career, in any other profession, you really have to find your own way. That doesn't mean that you cannot have dialogues and, uh, and offer pearls of wisdom, if you will. Uh, at my age, I think I can <laughs> offer a few, but um, everything is relative to the other person's experience. Uh, um, seeing that I have, that I was raised in, in the 1940s and 50s, uh, the perspective, um, with today's um, uh, culture is, is quite different um, and it's quite dramatic. I, I grew I mean, I grew up before television. Uh, <laughs> people can't really relate to that. What? Um, I grew up uh, without telephone in the house. Um, I never drove in my country until I came here when I was uh, out of uh, art school. So there are a lot of things that are uh, very different in terms of uh, um, giving advice to people. 
I, I don't give unsolicited advice. Um, what I do, I place um, different perspectives for people to consider and let people make their own decisions. But again, uh, as an artist, um, there are different ways of seeing who, what an artist is today with the technologies that, that, are, that are upon us. You know, the, the internet, for example, you know, the, the digital uh, um, medium, um, the electronic medium, all of those that I didn't grow up with. I grew up with pencils and, and, and charcoal and paint and canvas and paper. That was my, that was my medium. And later on with the camera, I'm also a photographer. So, and I developed my own, my own photographs. You don't have to do that anymore. See, all of that knowledge, um, some people would say it's for naught, but it isn't because it really gives you uh, an understanding of the medium that people today probably don't have. So um, just following uh, one's instinct, being um, intelligent about it, being studious, very, very uh, important to, to put time in studying your medium, whatever that is. Um, we're in the era of uh, immediate gratification and people want to have a 10-foot sculpture in three days. It's not possible, you know? I mean, it is possible if you have all the machines and if you have all the technology, but <coughs> the, the, the human effort, the individual human effort in studying and, and, uh, and creating, and it's, it's perhaps the most important one. And, and perhaps that's the only advice that I would say, you know, if you're gonna go into any particular art form, be studious and be serious about it and do it the best way that you can and be open, always be open to suggestions, to advice and to, uh, to comments because that will, that will uh, allow you to grow even further. Well, um, when people ask me how much is this painting, um, I take a uh, um, I take the view that price is really not important, whether it's $600 or $6,000. What uh, people really need to, uh, to be aware of and understand when, when looking at purchasing a work, for example, is what does it mean in terms of the life of the artist? Uh, they are acquiring a piece of the artist's life. That's really what it is. <clears throat> and sometimes it doesn't look as complicated or as um, well manufactured or as uh, uh, intricate. Um, and, and the question arises, well, it's just, it's just a, a, a very simple painting. Why does it cost so much? Again, I think it's really a synthesis. That's what it is. It's a synthesis of, of, of my history in every single piece that I, that I make. Um, and also, um, I think that um, people need to really up, up understand and learn to appreciate um, the artists around them. Because um, often, more often than not, you know, I get surrounded by a lot of people, good, well-meaning people that uh, praise uh, I mean, praise my work a lot and they say they enjoy and so on but I've never uh, had the opportunity to sell one to, to, to people so I think that is important to support the artists as well um, it's, um, it's like passing the baton so to speak it's not so much that well I want to make money honestly um, as an artist I have never really made a living I had always had to support myself doing other things. I'm also a musician, so I, I, I have done music for a living as well. Um, but art is, is a very, very difficult, uh, difficult uh, animal to, to um, make it a living. Um, you have to be many things. You have to be an entrepreneur, you have to be a promoter, you have to be all kinds of things. And by being all those things, by being all those things, um, something gives. Your work, your work, work gives. So while you're painting, you're, you have to be thinking about where am I going to promote it, and it's necessary. But it really is. It's a very complicated um, uh, 
issue about being an artist. So uh, and I'll, I'll continue to do it, you know, even if I don't make a lot of money. But I think it's important for me to, to be who I am as an artist and, and see what happens. These two pieces um, date back to 1978, um, using model and creating some abstractions. And this obviously is just a free form painting called Las Cazuelas. And I call that Iztaccíhuatl. Iztaccíhuatl is, a, uh, is the name for a, for a volcano in Mexico, in the outskirts of Mexico City. And it's called the Sleeping Woman. And as you can see, or hopefully you can, uh, it's, it's the, uh, the, the shape of a, of a woman. Um, and I wanted to, to play with color uh, um, the, the, the juxtaposition of one color against the next one and uh, challenging myself to, to develop a scheme uh, right in the moment. Uh, there was only a, a preliminary sketch done of both of these. Um, and then when the painting came about, it was right on the canvas. So uh, I've always been... Uh, um, impromptu, so to speak, in, 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 in developing the color as I paint. I have a general idea of what colors I'm going to use, but never to the, to the detail. And uh, on, on all of these, I, it was all free form, all no rulers, no uh, um, things to, to, to do the shapes, all is freehand, and, uh, and give it a geometric feel without having to use the geometric uh, instruments. Um, and this, um, looking back at, at these paintings, um, I can see where my, my uh, scheme of color started to develop, you know, with this, the cadmium oranges and the, and the aquas and, and so on, and that, and the, and the yellows, that in, in my uh, work, uh, body of work of today are a lot more intense and more uh, vibrant. These two pieces uh, date back to 1989. Um, these are uh, pieces that I did uh, for a show in Athens, Greece uh, as an invited guest uh, artist. And these are part of a series that I did uh, on oppression and, uh, and political uh, issues. This piece is called Homage to Victor Jara. Victor Jara was a Chilean uh, poet and, and uh, singer that was um, at the forefront of the uh, anti-junta um, movement in, in Chile um, when uh, General Augusto Pinochet um, uh, executed a, a coup d'etat after Salvador Allende was uh, democratically um, elected president. And uh, this piece talks about his martyrdom. Um, he played the guitar, uh, but he, he was jailed. This is, this is a semblance of a jail here. This is a, a mixed media collage with paint and what have you. <clears throat> and uh, he was tortured. Um, and he was tortured so brutally that uh, to this day it still has a great impact on, on what I think about it. Um, his fingers were cut off so he would not play the guitar. And then after that, they cut his tongue off so he wouldn't sing. He, along many other people, then were shot at the um, uh, soccer stadium in, in Chile, in Santiago, I believe. But this is a, is, a, is a positive figure, it's a positive piece, I believe, because ultimately his voice continues. And this is what the rooster um, symbolizes. His, his song is, is there forever. <clears throat> and this other piece is uh, an homage 
to Women. It's called Ode to Women uh, from, from a com combination of photographs, silk screen, and painting. And uh, there is the semblance of the, of the flag, but it's an oppressive flag because you can see the, the, the shards of barbed wire. And it's a very lyrical, it's open to interpretation again, you know, but it was, it was in, in honor of all women who, who, who suffer oppression. And, uh, and you can also see the color, that, how it has continued to develop back in, in 89. This is 25 years, 25 is it? Yeah, about 25. And that's 35. Those two earlier ones are 35 years. So it's kind of coincidental that they are 10 years apart. Um, and of this series, uh, a lot of people in, in Athens um, bought. I bought, I, I sold like about 12 to 15 paintings. Um, I was very encouraging to see that my work was, was, was appreciated and this is the first piece that I uh, did uh, this last time I went to Puerto Rico. Um, and uh, again, uh, the compositions, they just come, you know. Uh, I go around the place and I look at the vegetation that is there and I just decide uh, I'm going to use this and then this and whatever. And uh, what am I going to start with? And I first color that came to my mind was yellow, uh, just happy color. So I just went at it with yellow and then the browns and the reds and a few other colors and, and there you are. Um, this particular one on the top is a palm. You can hardly see it, it's, it's meant that way. But it, it provides um, pattern and texture. So does this one, it's a philodendron, you know. Um, and it was so much fun to, to play with the textures and the velatures and, and the different uh, shapes of, of, the, of the leaves that uh, I was just so excited, you know, to, to, to go at it first time. And this is one of the last ones that I did while I was there. Um, this was quite a challenge because, of course, the colors, I, I love this, this hot pinks. And, and oranges and yellows. <clears throat> but um, the challenge was uh, the palm. Because this is on, a, on acrylic paint, and I was, I was alone. I mean, I, I worked alone. I like to work alone. Um, but the, the physical challenges on, on, on executing this were such that, for example, the, the, the the leaves, they have to be painted. The paint has to be applied one leaf at a time. But you have to work so fast. First of all, you're dealing with the heat there, so things dry quicker. So a single, single leaf at a time, the whole thing, and then turning it over and placing it without smears it's, it was quite a physical challenge. Uh, I got pre pretty good at it, but uh, it, it is nevertheless a, a huge challenge. And then just finding out how you're going to, to, um, uh, to compose your picture. And so it's all, it's all in the moment. You know, I didn't really think this way, way ahead. Of course, I saw these palms and I saw, well, I want two palms in there. How are they gonna go? Then let's, let's figure it out then. And there they are, and then you see this. And you see this other one, and you see this other one, and of course, um, this piece is, I think, the last piece that I did before coming back, and um, appears simple, and it is simple, um, but I wanted it that way because of the of the uh, proportions, and this was one of the smallest <laughs> banana leaves that. Uh, that I could use because you can find um, leaves of this kind that are maybe 20, 25 feet long. Um, I would love to paint one of those but again, you paint something and then what do you do with it? 
that's always a problem. And this, um, I was very um, intrigued because uh, where I was, there's a lot of banana leaves, and banana trees and what have you, and there's a lot of dead leaves. And this is a, 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 a dry, dead banana leaf, and this is a brand new one. So the, the dichotomy of life and death and renewal. So, I mean, it really called for, for doing this kind of piece, and I called it uh, Banana Leaves in Aqua, uh, Life, Death, Renewal. And that's, this is one of my favorites of the whole, of the whole series. And uh, the color scheme, uh, consistent with others, the blues, the greens, which, which are prevalent in, in, in a tropical setting. Um, the, the other colors that you see, hot pinks and so on, of course, those are mine, uh, my artistic license that I take all the time. Um, and uh, <clears throat> I wish that uh, there was a way to, to uh, there's a way to paint a large, large pieces, but a way to, to place them, to place them. Because uh, it's a hard place to, to find a, a, a good location for them here. And that's it. Well, this is what the library calls the signature piece for the exhibit. Um, this also was one of the first pieces that I, that I created um, of this series. And again, I was um, intrigued by the shape of the, of the leaves there. For example, these kind of leaf um, are quite exciting. Um, shape and texture, and the yellow prevailed. You know, the yellow continued to to call me, and uh, and exploring a little more with the reds and blues and what have you. But it was a, a very free. The the whole experience was very free in terms of of composition and and execution. Um, I don't like to think much about um, what am I going to do next, that kind of stuff, and. Uh, I do think about it, but not over, uh, overly so, because then um, too many other things get in the way. And uh, this one um, can show um, more of a, uh, the brush stroke on the background here. And uh, I like the, the, the play of color with the, with the gray and the yellow, the yellow-green. Um, Quite exciting, I find. And again, you know, the banana leaf at the very top. Um, um, the, bana the, the banana leaf has a, has a lot of possibilities um, uh, pictorially, and um, uh, I wish there was a way to explore them longer. Um, um, but again, you know, the, the question about you know the placement of the of the work once it's finished is. It's always an issue for me, but um, I don't think I'm going to stop doing, <laughs> doing it because of that. So um, and I'm pretty pleased with, with how this turns out, turned out, um, and, uh, and it really gives me um, incentive to, to, to do more in a different, uh, in a different environment or who knows? But yeah, the, the work continues.